one two one two welcome to another edition of tk's two cents from the revolution of one every tuesday every wednesday every thursday 12 p.m eastern time i am here coming at you live on twitter on periscope uh for tk's two cents i take a couple of tweets i give you some thoughts about those tweets and then on the revolution will be live stream which is on wednesdays it's kamau and i having a special guest talking about what's going on in the world and how to use ideas to create more freedom in your life. Let's start with tweet number one. Today, we're going to talk about how to avoid the devil's greatest trick and how to become an angel's advocate. All right. The greatest trick the devil ever played was to convince people that it was too expensive to be themselves. Nothing cheapens your life more than, uh, than the belief that you can't afford to walk the path that wears your name. All right, I got a comment I wanna address on this really quickly before I, I riff on this topic. Uh, and a shout out here to uh, Soul Blockchain, who said name is too burdensome. And I think that's a fair objection because we live in a culture that is very um, obsessed and overly preoccupied with titles and status and things along those lines. So the first point of clarification that I want to make is that when I say name, as in the path that wears your name, I do not mean fancy titles or labels or status or any of those things, because there are a lot of people in this world who have mastered that game, but they are still so far away from walking the path that wears their name, the path that brings them the most freedom and the most fulfillment. It's people who work at a highly reputable organization. They have a nice fancy title. They might be the person in charge or the right hand to the person in charge, and they still aren't living freely and fully. So what do I mean by the path that wears your name? I mean, creating a lifestyle in which you live according to your principles, your priorities, and your preferences. If you're not doing those three things, you are not walking the path that wears your name. You might be impressive to someone else who doesn't know the whole story about the trade-offs that you're making, but the path that wears your name is about saying, hey, what makes me come alive? What is my highest excitement? And to what degree am I orienting my time and my energy and my efforts around that? We work so hard to build other people's ideas, to bet on other people's ideas. We put our reputations at stake for other people's ideas. We get up out of bed when we don't feel like it for other people's ideas, but then it feels so expensive to put forth that same effort or even just a fraction of that effort on the things that matter most to us. I, I remember hearing Oprah Winfrey talk about early on in her career. She started off on this talk show and she was the co-host with someone else and she was doing as much legwork as her co-host and she found out that she wasn't even being paid anywhere close to what he was making. So she requested a raise and they basically let her know in a nutshell that they didn't think she was worth it. And so she decided she's going to strike out on her own. She started her own show. And over time, she went on to become the billionaire Oprah Winfrey legend that we know today. But what must that process have been like when she was thinking it through? How expensive must it have felt to bet on herself? I mean, I've got this safe cushy job. And even though I don't feel respected or I don't have the freedom that I want here, at least I have something, right? And, and, and there are so many people that are not in my position and they might envy me or look up to me and I'm going to put this at risk. Can I really afford to bet on myself? Can I really afford to go out on my own? It feels so expensive. And many of us are faced with this kind of dilemma all the time. There, there's an old school movie, What's Love Got to Do With It? Starring Angela Bassett, Lawrence Fishburne. It's about Tina Turner. She was this very talented singer and dancer, this performer, but she was in an abusive relationship. And one day she wakes up, she recognizes her value and her worth and says, you know what? I can be so much bigger and better. And the person she's in a relationship with says, you can't make it without me. Oh my gosh, what a mind job, right? What must it have been like to, to think about that and say, well, I don't like where I'm at right now, but if I try to strike it on my own, what if I embarrass myself? What if I fail? What if life gets worse? It feels so expensive to bet on ourselves, but in order to achieve great things, in order to live freely and fully, you have to be willing to not just take chances on what other people demand of you, 
but to take chances on things that you want. And so if it feels expensive to create the life that you want, ask yourself, what in the world is the alternative? You know, it's fine when people like you, but if it's not the real you that they like, that isn't very fulfilling. There's a book by John Eldridge called Wild at Heart where he says, allow the world to feel the weight of who you truly are and then let them deal with it. There is nothing more expensive than living the life that somebody else has assigned to you because it comes at the cost of your own fulfillment. And that's something that you can't get a refund on. Let's go to tweet number two. Once again, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, we're here on the Revolution of One live stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I break down tweets, give you some thoughts on how to use the ideas to take better charge of your life. And then on Wednesday, Kamau and I, we do the Revolution will be live stream and we have a special guest and we talk about what's going on in the world and how to make the most of life. So tweet number two, you don't have to be motivated by the same ideals as another person in order to learn something from them. You don't have to be impressed by another person's achievements in order to learn something from the discipline and creativity it took for them to recognize, to realize those achievements. All right, let's talk about the concept of devil's advocate. Usually devil's advocate is the role that we play when someone embraces an idea a little too quickly, right? And so by playing devil's advocate, we're challenging someone to think twice about something that they're believing uncritically. So I'm gonna coin angel's advocate for when we do the reverse, because sometimes people dismiss ideas a little too quickly. And so an angel's advocate is when you challenge people to think twice about uncritically rejecting an idea that might be useful to them. One of the main reasons we often fail to learn is because we focus more on the flaws in people's personalities rather than on the usefulness of the ideas they espouse. We're so occupied with personalities that it's kind of become a lost art to learn from people that we don't like. But here's the thing. If you can't learn from people who have flaws, you can't learn from anyone. If you can't learn from people who have imperfections, how will you ever teach yourself anything? You know, when, when you listen to someone talk, the easiest thing to do, or when you read their book or whatever it is, the easiest thing to do is to find something weird or quirky or bothersome or annoying about the way they express themselves, the way they look, their accent, whatever it may be. But if you're doing that kind of stuff, you're not being selfish enough. You're just doing what's easy. And that's really a form of hiding that hinders your ability to challenge yourself and grow. Instead of listening to someone or reading someone with an effort to find what's wrong with them, be so selfish, be so adamant about what you want to accomplish in life that instead of saying, what's wrong with this person, ask yourself, what's wrong with my life? Instead of asking yourself, what's missing in this person, ask yourself, what's missing in my life and how might I use what they have to offer as a tool to help me create the results that matter most in my life? Because you know what? You don't really win any points for being able to knock somebody else off the pedestal. You don't really win any points for being able to say, ah, look at that person's shoes. Why do they know? Or this person's stupid. You don't really win any points for that. But you win every time when you can recognize that a tool or a technique or a concept can benefit your life. And you say, hey, this person right here, total idiot, don't like anything about them, hate the way they look, hate the way they sound, hate the way they dress, but you know what? I'm so in love with my potential that I'm going to use that idea that they just gave me and I'm gonna build what I want to build using that powerful idea as a foundation because I ain't gotta like you in order to like me and the possibilities of my life and in order to use what you have to offer to expand those possibilities. All right, that's TK's two cents. That's it, have an awesome week. I will see you tomorrow for The Revolution Will Be live stream, 12 o'clock Eastern time. Peace out, y'all.